Welcome back to another episode of Coffee with April. Um, I'm drinking coffee, brought up the board again, which uh, you know sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. However, we're gonna discuss something. Uh, we're not gonna discuss it because it's not a discussion. Uh, th these videos is about sharing how how we do things, how we roast coffee. It's not about debating whether someone else is doing something wrong. Uh, that's not what we're trying to do. We're just trying to share our kind of perspective on things. Um, and I get a lot of questions uh, on this whole development time ratio. So what people are referring to is basically um, when you roast coffee, you go into crack and the time after that crack until the end of the roast is what some people refer to as development time. Um, most people know what I think about using that term. Again, use whatever term you want to, it doesn't really matter. I say time after crack because time after crack is, is describing pretty accurately what it is. Um, and, and development time uh, would indicate that development is, is not the whole curve, but just a part of the curve. And I think development is a whole curve. But again, that doesn't really matter. However, in this discussion, there is also a thought process where a lot of people are really, really focused on percentage, which is kind of interesting as to why they are interested in that. Um, I'm going to explain to you why we are not interested in percentage, right? Um, I made, made a few kind of, uh, uh, let's call them graphs, it's not really graph, lines on a board with a bunch of numbers on it. Um, to kind of explain um, how I'm thinking about this from a roasting perspective. So we basically have three different roasts here, one being eight minutes, 10 minutes, and 12 minutes. Um, and just random number here, we've taken 15% as your time after crack or development time, if that's what you want to call it. Um, and I basically just very clearly shown you um, what 15% of eight minutes would be. 15% of 10 minutes would be, and 15% of 12 minutes would be. Um, and I mean, we don't really have to discuss this more than that. It's, it's very clearly that if you're roasting different roast times and you're letting percentages guide you, then you're gonna have different times after first crack. Now, the challenge with that, from my perspective, is that the reactions that are happening after first crack or with first crack is not necessarily 100% connected with what's happening before. Meaning that there's a very, very big difference in reactions after crack between one minute and 48 seconds and one minute and 12 seconds, regardless of duration of roast, right? So, if you, for example, would measure color, uh, measure, uh, measure chemical compounds, uh, or just taste the coffee, you, you realize very, very quickly that there's a huge difference. So saying that you always should use 15% becomes interesting uh, because then in technically 15% here is one minute and 48 seconds. So then you can take one minute and 48 seconds and put it here. No, you can't because you're gonna have a significantly darker roasted coffee, right? And again, it's not necessarily based on what's happening here that the total duration is eight. That's not how the coffee roasting works. They're not linked together uh, to that extent, the processes that is happening. Um, time after crack has a huge impact on, on color of the bean, uh, which we all know. Um, naturally, it gets more complex than this. It's also what kind of burner settings are you working with here? What kind of airflow settings are you working with here? So obviously this, this question is a lot more complex, but saying that you always should have, let's say 15% or 20% development for your filter coffees, and you have four different filter profiles with four different times, giving you four different actual time after crack, um, doesn't really make any sense um, because that's not how it works. Also, especially when we're looking at different coffees. So different coffees picks up temperature very differently. Different coffees develop sugars differently. Um, 
different carbons have different acidic compounds in it as well. Uh, meaning that to, to standardize it and say that all categories of one coffee should be roasted within that range uh, doesn't really make any sense. However, if you flip it around and you say, okay, I'm looking for a, a specific time after first crack for, let's say, a specific range of coffees, let's say wash process canning coffees from a certain region with a certain density and moisture content, then that can actually give you a very uniform reaction and result on all of those different coffees from that same region just by using the same time after crack, right? So meaning here at April, for example, if we categorize filter coffees, even if it's an eight minute, 10 minute, 12 minute roast, we will work with the same or a very similar time after crack for coffees from the same country and the same region, right? So it doesn't mean that a coffee that from, let's say, wash process Ethiopian versus a wash process um, Costa Rican coffee would have the same time after crack, but it means that if I have four wash process Ethiopian coffees from, let's say, Yoga Chef or Sidamo, then those would most likely have the same time after first crack, right? Um, so it's, it's important to kind of understand which part of the process, which part of the curve is generating certain aspects of it. Um, and, and we believe that a lot of the development, a lot of the structure, a lot of the flavor and taste experience comes from what we're doing in the roast before crack. Um, after crack is very important as well, uh, but, but we're separating it. And again, for, for those of you that continues to, <laughs> to write me emails asking about uh, percentage of uh, development time, uh, and I keep on replying, I'm not gonna give it to you because it doesn't really make any sense. This is why, right? Um, so the, what, what's ha what happens after first crack doesn't give a damn about what happened before first crack. It's still gonna go through X amount of reactions, um, which is, is, is very much not based on, to that extent, the total duration of the roast, right? Which is why saying that you should have the same percentage on different roast times. Uh, really will just make you roast very inconsistent. Um, I hope that was a bit of a clarification. And again, uh, I know sometimes when we push these kind of videos, it sounds a bit harsh. It's not about that. It's about saying what we, what we believe in. Um, I'm not saying that someone that is roasting with the same percentage of development time is, is roasting bad coffees. I'm just curious in, in understanding what we're actually doing. Uh, and I mean, five years ago, I also roasted with a certain percentage, right? But you know, you live, you learn, you discover, and you question things, and then you realize that it actually doesn't really make any sense. Uh, and then you progress and you move forward. But um, that was about it. Thank you guys for tuning in. I assume a lot of you will have questions on this. Um, and I mean, if, if, if you don't find the answers to the question in this video here, I mean, I'm sure there's other people that can explain this as well. Um, but as always, thank you guys for tuning in. Um, any comments down here, thoughts, we're always happy. If there's any specific you guys want us to share, then just write a note and we're gonna try to answer that as well. Thank you.